Welcome to Madeira. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline. I'm traveling around this gorgeous island with my other half, Andy, who right now seems to be taking what feels like a million and one photographs because this morning we've driven up to Bica da Cana and we have got so lucky, not only with this gorgeous sunrise, but we've got a cloud inversion going on too. Not that I've been to them yet, but I understand that the Sao Lorenco and the Pico do Arriero are two very popular sunrise spots. If you want to experience a sunrise that is nice and high up with some amazing views, I would highly recommend coming here. The entire time that we've been here, we've had the viewpoint completely to ourselves. I have to confess that this morning hasn't quite gone as planned. We got up so early this morning. We checked out of our bell tents and it was still pitch black outside. The alarm, it was painful, but we were like, it's gonna be worth it because we're gonna get to see the sun come up over the mountains. And when we parked up, we took a wrong turn. We ended up dropping down some elevation quite quickly. And then it got to a point where we were like, why is there no viewpoint? And then we looked it up and we realized that we'd taken the wrong turn. And so we ended up having to quite some pace, clamber back up that really rocky, bouldery pathway. And then to get onto the right trail, it was still even further uphill to get to that viewpoint. We also managed to leave breakfast in the car. Leaving so early, we were not about to sit around and have breakfast at the campsite. So yeah, again, we planned on having breakfast up at that viewpoint, which obviously hasn't happened. So we're just wandering back to the car now. We're gonna have something to eat and then we'll start to make a game plan for the remainder of the day. We're now going to drive quite a way across the island to a different hiking trail that we really want to do today. We've only driven for about 10 minutes and there's this road that links the two mountains and there's valleys on either side. One valley has got the cloud inversion that we could see, but the other valley on the other side of the road is completely clear of clouds. We obviously had this this morning when we drove across it for the sunrise, but we were in complete pitch black, so we had no idea. So it was quite a long drive from the sunrise point that we were at this morning and Andy very kindly has been driving around Madeira for the both of us. And given the early start to this morning, I fell asleep and had a nap in the car. I must have woken up about five minutes before we got here. And as we pulled in, there seemed like quite a major parking lot. And there's a big parking sign and underneath in bright green LED lights it said Livre and I was a bit like, are you sure we're in the right place? So he got out his phone and he showed me on the map and he's like, it's this hike here that we're doing, isn't it? And I was like, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> so it turns out, if I get up on my own phone, it turns out that we have come along to the Levara do Caldeirao Verde. It's the PR9, I'm probably butchering that because I wasn't even expecting to come here. And he's like, oh, it's like a 20 minute drive to the one that you'd planned on going to. But I was like, well, what is this? And it says here that this waterfall hike, I was like, yes, winning, waterfall, is one of the most popular and beautiful hikes in Madeira. I say since we're here, let's go do this hike instead. And also I think it's just a little bit less of a distance than the one that we'd planned on doing. And given that we had the very, very early start today, maybe actually our bodies will be grateful for a little bit less effort. We're a little bit confused about the parking situation because in order to get into that really big car park, we had to drive through a barrier. The barrier spat out a ticket at us and we've scanned in the barcode on our phone and it explains that we need to make sure that we pay before we return to our car. But the only place where you can pay for the tickets is in the really beautiful thatched roof museum that was behind where we were sat having our coffees. And that museum is shut at the moment. So there's a potential that we could end up parking for free today, which would make a little bit of sense because the barrier to get out was open as we came in. And the other thing that we were wondering is, do they have these barriers there just to deter people from coming and illegally camping? So we have seen signs as we've started this trail saying no fires and no camping. 
But the other thing that we've wondered, when we went to Cabo Girao, they had these turnstile barriers. Now they were also open a bit like the car barrier today. So we didn't have to pay anything to get in there. But we're wondering if maybe they're starting to put the infrastructure in to charge people to get out into that viewpoint. And with this being one of the most popular hikes in Madeira, maybe they're going to be charging people to park here in the future. Obviously, if when we get back, the museum is opened, I will update you with how much we've had to pay to park here. The sun is working so hard right now to try and burn through the clouds, but every now and again, when we look out on this side of the Levada through the gaps in the trees and the bushes, you can see down into an epic valley that's a little bit foggy still. And I think that had these bushes and trees not been here, it would probably give the views from this Levada a run for its money from the Moinho Levada walk that we did as our first hike. But I think that this probably is a predominantly cloudy and foggy hike because the amount of lichens and moss that's just growing off of all of the trees. And I think because it's been foggy for quite a little bit, the amount of dew that's just hanging off of the branches and hanging off of the moss is really cool to look at. pushed us off down a staircase and then we had to cross what I'm assuming would be a waterfall after heavy rains just stepping across boulders and then back up a staircase on the other side and it was because there was a fence fencing off the path from being able to follow on the Levada so it seems like on this one there might be a few more ups and downs than most of the Levadas that we've experienced so far. This Levada in some points like this doesn't have any wall going up to it and it's quite a bit of a drop and I was just commenting saying that if you were to fall down this I think that if you're on your own you probably wouldn't be able to get back up of it because it's such a drop you'd be very much reliant on the hordes of people because it's a very popular trail coming past and like you go and grab my hands and pull me up but yeah it's a bit dangerous so you need to keep a keep an eye out maybe one you know if you're hiking with small children to be aware of this sort of area. Hi, it's Caroline from the future. And as I'm walking back to the car park at the end of the hike, I've actually just witnessed a child of about maybe 11 or 10 years old just fall into the Levada. I don't know how it happened because I only noticed when I heard the almighty splash and then the chortles of laughter. So luckily everyone was in very good spirits about it, but apparently it happens. This trail is slightly struggling to make its mind up, but in fairness to the trail, I think what it is is that every time the Levada has to go right into a valley to meet up with a waterfall and then to stick back out again, the valley seem to be lit up with sunlight and therefore they're quite warm. But then the second we get pushed back out of the little valleys into the main one where the cloud's still really hanging in it, the temperature just drops. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should take off my fleece. Maybe I should keep on my fleece. I think this is just one of those hikes where you you want to bring layers so that you can layer up if you're chilly and you can take them off if you get hot. The trees have completely dispersed and given us this really great view over the valley and whilst the cloud is also clearing up you can still definitely see that there's quite a bit of cloud and fog still stuck down there whereas it's absolutely clear at this point. Oh, this part of the walk seems to be cutting like right into the hillside, which is a bit of a fuss because normally it's always just hugged along. This is looking quite adventurous now. I think I spoke too soon. It's because it's going straight into a tunnel. <laughs> This must have been the longest tunnel that I've done to date. And oh my goodness, this trail is so incredibly busy. We had to keep on moving over for loads of people. And then right in the middle, it got so low. You have to like full on duck down. I think just be very careful so that you don't end up bashing your head on that one. I'm 
feeling pretty smug that I didn't take off my headlamp because no sooner have we come out of that tunnel, we're straight back into another one. And it would help if I actually turned mine on. There we go. At the points where all of the tunnels are, if you suffer from vertigo, this might be quite a scary point in the walk. I have not been up this high on any of the Lovada walks so far. The tree coverage has definitely thinned out as well. I mean, it gives spectacular views over the valley, but it is pretty scary. Whilst I have very much enjoyed this trail, one thing to note is that towards the end as you are approaching the waterfall, there's a really, really long section where it's so incredibly narrow, it's very difficult to be able to just walk past people. And one party going in one direction is gonna to have to stop and really push themselves up against the railings in order to be able to let other people pass. We found that as a couple, we were just getting constantly outnumbered because it does seem sensible that the smaller number of people are the ones who stop and move over. And so even if it was like three people, they just, I think, had that mentality of there's more of us than what there are of you. You guys need to move over. And it was slowing us down big time. What we then ended up doing is we piggybacked onto the back of a French family and there were four of them. So therefore we ended up being a group of six. And then that mentality had flipped. And I think people who were coming towards us started to pick up on the fact that we were quite a big group and they were stopping and moving over. The other thing that I also noticed is that when we were walking as a two and we were the ones always having to stand over to one side, very, very few people were saying thank you or even acknowledging the fact that we were stopping for them, which was starting to get very frustrating. So once we joined up and made that party of six, I made a really big point of saying thank you in both English and Portuguese to every single person who'd stopped. Liz, we just another 100 meters up these steps to the big epic finish of a waterfall. We got some stamina, come on, let's go. As I was setting up the camera just to film us in front of the waterfall whilst having lunch, his father had spotted the camera and he pointed at it and then his daughter like waved at the camera. And when I ended up watching it back, I thought it was actually really quite nice and sweet. And so I went over to them and just to double check, would you be happy if I was to put this onto YouTube? At which they were quite excited by that aspect. And it turns out she's actually gonna be going to one of the universities really close to my hometown where I grew up. So. We've ended up having a right old chat about like my recommendations of things that I love in the northeast of England and hikes and things that can be done. We're going to head back now rather than go on to the next hike just because we're a little bit tired. It's been an early early start. It's quite late in the afternoon so we sort of need to be able to get to to the hostel our accommodation tonight um, our game plan is to sort of just tag on to a larger group hopefully like a family of four safety in numbers as they say one of my thoughts is that the really really long tunnels people are very obviously going and using them as toilets because the smell of urine is really quite overpowering obviously you shouldn't be urinating into the lavada anyway but then just the idea of having to like trap people into that smell is really very unpleasant. I have said before that it can be quite tricky to find some like tree or bush to go pee behind on these lavadas, but it is doable. I just wish that people weren't doing it in those tunnels. Yeah. Oh cool, how much? Three euros. For the whole day? Yeah. Nice. We're straight back into fog, even though the hike almost all the way back was in beautiful sunlight with blue skies. We're now gonna hop in the car, make the short drive across to our backpackers hostel where we're gonna be staying for the next five nights. The place 
that we're staying at next doesn't have any private parking but they've just said it's really easy to park up on the street and you don't have to pay for parking so we've just spotted a bay that is super close apparently according to GPS to the hostel so we've just nabbed it grabbed all of our stuff and we're now just walking I think around the corner to where our accommodation oh like literally just around this corner here it is we are staying at Jacka Hostel which is part of the same organization that we stay in when we were in Funchal. Shoes off. Take this one close to the door. Yeah, no problem. It's probably just worth my while saying that they only had a twin room available for the next couple of nights and then we'll get changed over into a double room. It's not like we've had an argument or anything. Not yet. <laughs> what do you mean, not yet? After a really quick freshen up at the hostel, we are now heading out in Porto de Cruz. Unfortunately, the snack bar right next door to the hostel is shut just today of the whole week. So instead, we're gonna head down to the seafront and see where we can go to eat because we've cooked ourselves for quite a few days and it's been quite a long day today with an early start, an epic drive, an epic hike. And we just fancy having someone else cook and clean up for us tonight. Dinner was delicious. I ended up going with the scabbard. I had it back in Funchal and it was so delicious with the banana. I also had it with the Brissa drink, which I believe is a Madeiran drink. I went with the apple one, but they do have it in like orange and passion fruit flavors too. And he ended up going with the fish of the day and neither of us can actually remember what it was called, but it's like a whole fish still with like the head on. And then we ended up having dessert too, which was the tiramisu. But instead of it being doused in the amaretto liquor, they instead doused it in the Madeiran wine and it was really nice. At this point, we're now just taking a wander around the town just to take in where we're gonna be for the next five or so nights. And so far we've walked past what looks to be some kind of rum something or other i know like if you're in scotland you would go to a whiskey distillery and if you're in say the champagne region in france you go to one of the champagne houses and it looks like one of those sorts of things where you can take a tour and maybe do some tastings we've also wandered out onto a different bay to the one that all of the restaurants were in front of and like the waves are just so wild and crazy here 